I'm going to show it in folder. It just downloaded to my downloads folder, but I'm going to move it to my comp folder. And actually, I already had a file there because I, I was working on this um, beforehand, but I'm just going to go ahead and replace this one so that we can work on a fresh file. And then I'm going to open this in Sublime. So I will do the most common way to access Sublime. You just go to your start menu or go to the icon on your desktop or go to the icon on the taskbar. And Sublime will then open in this way over here. And then I'm going to take my file and drag it into Sublime. We suggest, um, and we can show you how to do this outside of class if you so need to, uh, but we suggest um, associating .sam files with Sublime, so that way all you have to do is double click the file and Sublime will open up for you. Um, that's why you see this nice little Sublime icon here. I know it's a little tiny, um, but let me actually make the view. Right, you'll see that all my SAM files and including my text files um, are associated with Sublime. So if I double click on that, it opens Sublime. Okay, and this is what a SAM file looks like in Sublime. So it's going to look um, colorful. The reason it looks colorful in this instance is because I've gone ahead and made sure um, that um, syntax highlighting, which again, it's not something you need to know right now for, we'll talk more about it uh, in ebook, uh, but syntax highlighting, I've set it to XML because remember that SAM and SCML are both um, XML based. So um, you would actually click right down here, the bottom right, and scroll down and click on XML and it gives you this nice highlighting for your file. So uh, Tim, if you could provide the link for Sublime Text. So um, again, remember Sublime um, is available online. It's free to download, free to see. You'll see this unregistered um, uh, mark up here and that is okay. Um, all you'll get is a, like every couple, like I think every 10 times you hit the save, it'll ask you if you'd like to donate and, and purchase and whatnot. So, but you don't have to, it's full featured. Um, so. So this is the file in Sublime. And so we're gonna do the same thing we did with Word where we're gonna go back and forth between the QC checklist and this file in Sublime. If you notice, this is actually what we compose. CRSER styles, our fig for the logo, right? Which actually that should be BK Pub one. That's a composition error on my part, but here you go. See, that's the QC mindset kicking in, right? Um, but we'll leave it as fig for now. Um, you see our copyright page here. This is what actually happened to our structure tags. You see begin chapter, and then you have structure and structure uh, around that, and so on and so forth. And here you'll see how this is underlined, which was U, uh, bold underline, BU around this one. Underline again, italic underline here, and so on and so forth. And all of these that I'm referring to are present in the SCML list. Um, so if you have any question about what any of these tags mean, you can easily do a search for it in the SCML list. Um, and you can also ask us at any, um, sp at any specific time, excuse me. So what we'll do, we'll go up to the top again. I always like working from the top to the bottom. That's sort of the way that they teach us here because that sort of gives you that mentality of I'm going through this entire file, catching whatever it might be. So once you're in Sublime, you can actually bring up control F, uh, just like you do in Word, and it brings up this search bar that you see here at the bottom. And this is where we are actually able to plug in our regular expressions. Our regular expressions, for them to work, we have to have this selected. You see that? Where it says, um, it's a little dot with an asterisk, a period with an asterisk, and that allows regular expressions. So, yeah. And then um, you'll see here where you see a uh, capital A and lowercase a, that means case sensitivity. You want that on so that way your regular expressions are catching, uh, are worried actually about case rather than disregarding it. Um, because for example, if we search for the word demo, right, lowercase, we're only gonna find the instances of demo that are lowercase. If we search for it capital, Right, and by the way, that quick movement, Sublime does that automatically. That's not actually me scrolling through. Um, so if you search for 
um, capital D demo, you will find all the instances of capital D. Without case sensitivity, then it's going to find, no matter what you type, either capital D or lowercase d, it's just going to find the word demo. Um, this is useful because it sort of reduces what Sublime is actually finding. Okay. And then um, the other option you want to have selected, the other two, this wrap will actually allow Sublime to search all the way to the bottom and automatically come back up to the file, to the top of the file. So that way it doesn't say, hey, you hit the end of the file, search from the top, and then you have to move to the top yourself. So having that wrap option um, is helpful. Uh, although if you just want it to hit the bottom and stop, that's fine as well. And then highlight all matches. All that does is that when you're searching for a certain term, it will actually highlight each instance. In my case, I have that set as a default. That's why that button doesn't really um, and do much. Uh, but you can either turn it on or turn it off. It's good to have it on because that way you can see um, each uh, instance uh, pretty much at a glance because you see this sort of like left and right angle, uh, sorry, this border around the text uh, that you're searching for. So we'll go ahead and clear this. So that is a brief primer on Sublime. Again, you don't need to worry too much about this right now. Uh, this is just so that you can see uh, how I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so we're going to go back to that QC checklist. So remember, we're going to go down to the text checks. By the way, we also have this nice little menu here that you can easily jump to any area. Um, so there you go. So you go text checks. And the first one checks for if, there, if all URL tags have been wrapped in, if all, excuse me, if all URLs have been wrapped in URL tags. This is a common issue in composition where you'll compose and then you'll forget to uh, compose um, URLs as actual URL uh, tags. So we can search for that. So you can either select the text and copy it, that's fine, but we actually have this handy tool where you can just click that button and it copies it automatically to your clipboard. So that way you don't have to um, you know, select the text and hit Control-C. Um, the reason that this is good is because if you are, um, if you miss something in a regular expression, let's say, I'll do it here, um, and this is the only thing where I'll show you a mistake. If you do that and you copy it, you're missing that parentheses, the regular expression won't work. Um, so it's better to just go ahead and hit that button because that'll select everything and copy it as you need to. So we copied it, I click the button, go back to Sublime, and I can paste it in here. Control V is a shortcut on PC. And so here at the bottom left, you'll see unable to find, and then it gives you the whole uh, regular expression. That means everything's okay, right? That our URLs are tagged as URLs, they need to be there. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, this is great. We'll go back to our QC list and then go move on to the next one. We've marked that one as checked. And then you're just gonna do that for the rest of them. And so we'll do that um, a little bit quickly here. Um, please do feel free um, to ask any questions about these. But again, remember that um, regular expressions, um, you know, is not something that you need to learn or master right now. There are plenty of resources, by the way, online. And if you would like to skip ahead and look at the module for eBooks, we actually um, put in some um, resources for you um, that allow you to practice regular expressions that are outside the class. But again, not a necessity, just giving it to you as, a, as an option. So we'll go and search for the next instance, right? And say this is, have websites been, um, wrapped in URL tags. So the first one checks for email addresses. This one is gonna check for websites. And so here we go, right? We're gonna go up to the top and we'll see that it is actually picking up this URL here because um, it's actually searching for all URLs. Now here's the issue. This is part of the metadata and you don't need to worry about this. This is what we would call a false positive. Remember that there is a human element to QC and it is for this very reason because if you just go ahead and start changing things globally and not even looking at them, you're going to insert errors into your file. So what you always want to do is you always want to be careful with the regular expression and what it's finding, analyze what you're looking at, and then determine what you want to do. So in these two cases, these two URLs do not need URL tags because that's metadata for the SAM. Everything above Sam here is metadata, so you don't need to worry about that one, about these two. 
But here we have one in the actual text. Scribenet.com needs to have URL tags applied. And then all you have to do to apply URL tags is actually go in and type it in as you would type in code. There's a shortcut to, to also do that, but I'll show you that uh, once we get to the ebook um, part of this. Um, and that'll be later on. So we've gone ahead and fixed this one and say, okay, if you look down here on the bottom left, you'll see that you have um, four matches. We covered the first two. This is the second one. Um, this is the third one, excuse me. And now we're going to go and find next. But look at this one. This one already has URL tags around it. So that one is okay. And we can move on from this one. Okay. Do we have any questions up to this point? I'll be moving back to the QC checklist in the meantime. Okay. And so we'll bring up the next search and it's searching if URLs contain prohibited characters, which are M dashes, N dashes, spaces, and things that can exist in URLs. Um, this sometimes happens because of the way that the author wrote the URL or anything like that, um, and something that we don't really check for while we're actually composing, but QC catches it here. So we're going to copy that, go back to Sublime, make sure to clear out the search box, and paste in the regular expression. And again, it did not find anything. It gives you that unable to find message at the bottom. If I hit find, it'll come back up again. So we are okay with that one. So we'll move to the next one. This one will search for any URLs that are run together. Um, so for example, you have HTTP, www, so on and so forth. And then without a space or anything, you have another URL. So we'll go ahead and search for that. So again, copy the button or hit the copy button, better said, and clear out your find and paste that in. And again, we are going to come up with nothing. So because of the way that we compose this file, because this file is so short, we're likely not going to run into a lot of um, issues, but it is pretty much the same process of look at it, copy it, paste it, check, and move on. So we'll move down to spa uh, missing uh, spaces around tags, something that's easier to catch in Sublime than in Word. So I hit the copy button, go to Sublime, remove the previous regular expression, and paste in the new one. And again, unable to find. Right? Again, I will remind you that it's very important to turn regular expressions on, because if you paste in a regular expression um, and this button is not on, um, you will never find anything because it's not actually searching for it. It's searching for literal characters. So we'll go back here and mark that as checked. And so here, spacing around hyphens, which is something that came up in our, in our lesson earlier today. All right, so we're going to go ahead and copy that, paste it in. And again, we're okay, unable to find the regular expression. And this is where you can see that it's less intensive than what we were searching before where we were searching throughout the whole document. And that's the use of regular expressions, that they are able to help you check the entire document in a matter of you know, seconds rather than minutes or hours um, in some cases. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, paste that in. And this is, again, another false positive. What well, this regular ex expression is searching for is for, um, you know, punctuation followed by, you know, uh, immediately followed by uh, a letter, a capital or lowercase letter. Um, and here we have that. But again, this is metadata. Anything above SAM, you don't worry about. And it's the only instance. Right? You'll see find one, and then that's it. One match, wrap past end of file. So we're good to go on that one as well. So again, it's the same process we copy here. Um, all this is uh, searching for is um, spaces after opening punctuation or before closing punctuation, or in other words, spaces where they shouldn't be spaces, right? And so we'll search. We got nothing, so we're good to go. We're going to move to the next one, right? This is searching 
uh, for any spaces uh, preceding um, a period before an ellipsis. And at any point, if you're not sure what a, a search is doing, you can always read the little descriptor there. So we're going to copy that, go to Sublime, and search, again, unable to be found. So we're good to go on that end as well, right? And so this search is for double punctuation, double uh, exclamation points, and so on. This one will, uh, especially if you're dealing with fiction books, will always bring up false positives because authors like to do like triple exclamation points to indicate somebody, you know, really excited or whatnot. So, uh, so you always got to be careful with those. But um, in textbooks, usually you should be okay. So I searched, didn't find anything, and so we'll again go down here. This is searching for spaces at the start of any line, after an opening tag, or at the end of any line. And that usually indicates that something went wrong in conversion. But in this case, we're all okay. So move here. Duplicate spaces. That's just searching for the same thing as duplicate punctuation. Space after space. Find. Didn't find anything. So it seems like we did a pretty good job with our with our composition. We are not finding a lot of stuff. So, next. And you see, as quickly as I'm going, this is how, you know, once you're working, this is how you'll go. You'll be like, all right, I didn't find anything. Let's move to the next one. Yeah. I just went ahead and marked that one ahead of time. All right? See, but this one actually found something. And this one found, um, because what it's searching for, it's searching for um, a tag and then a lowercase letter, which often indicates that there's a bad break um, in um, like in a paragraph or anything like that. But in this case, we know that print line here was lowercase. That's okay as it should be. So we can move on to the next one. It's finding these two. These are sublist, lowercase letters at the beginning. So those are okay. We can move on. Um, here it's actually treating this as if it were like a little O, but that's actually supposed to be a, uh, an open bullet, right? We should probably change that to open bullet, but we won't for now. Um, and so these are okay for now. And here it's finding the equations, right? Which again, have lowercase letters and they're supposed to have lowercase letters, so we're okay. And then we go right back up to the print line, which is where we started. So everything is okay in this instance. So we'll go back, marked it already. And so these last two, this is searching for small caps content. Um, small caps should, um, should, I believe, be all lowercase because the hub will make it all caps and make it um, nice for you. So you should always um, check that first, but we don't have any small caps here. Um, so it's not gonna find anything. Okay, and finally, it's gonna have you check the ISBNs to make sure uh, that no hyphens and dashes or things that are, um, um, excuse me, n dashes or m dashes are used in the ISBNs, they should be hyphens. So well, let me make sure I copied this, copied here, paste it in here. And so it's going to come down here and you'll see here, but these are hyphens, so we are good to go. And now that we've gone ahead and checked our SAM file, make sure everything was okay, we're good to go, right? Any changes that you want to make and you have your word file open, you can. Um, you can uh, fix it in your Word file. We didn't have many. So in this case, we have done our due diligence and QC'd our composed file. And with that, we are actually done. And this is now our composed file, and it's ready to be edited.